The All Seeing Guys podcast is part of Britpod Scene, an independent network of uniquely British podcasts that's always growing. Check out BritpodScene.com or follow Britpod Scene on Twitter to find out more. Welcome to the Episode Halloween. <laughs> yeah, 90. Epis- no, no, 89. 89. Ugh. 89. That's Teetering the, uh, around Halloween. I think this will be coming out around Halloween. Yeah, it's the year so, the, uh, of the Hillsborough tragedy. So, I think. Nice. There you go. Bit of knowledge. So I've gone for a more Halloween theme that we never, I don't think we've actually done a Halloween We have episode, never, have we? ever. I don't think we've ever done like. We've we, always been like we should do one, but never actually have. And this isn't technically really a Halloween episode, but. No, this will come out the. I, I'm basing sometime. things around. It'll come out around, but I'm basing content loosely based around Halloween, i.e. Yeah, yeah. horror in general. Uh, but how are we doing? Yeah, it's all right, man. How are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm all right. It's still wet outside. Still wet. Still, yeah, because. It's getting dark early now. It is. It's getting very dark. It's fucking summer's summer's very much gone. Oh yeah, we are, summer's we are, done. We are now in autumn. I kind of like autumn. Yeah, it's nice. It. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind this rain. It's not too cold yet. The rain's not too bad. Nah. It's just. It's it was just a bit that... stormy. We had a, we had a, a couple storm. of stormy. It's been fucking windy though, hasn't it? Mm. Fuck me, it's been windy. Jesus Christ. Oh yes. It's been yep. fucking windy. Know all about the wind. Yeah. Fuck, we know all about the wind. Um. Yeah. Been windy as fuck. So it's been very English weather. But you know, has, yeah, what do we do? Very traditional. What do we do? We just get on with it. We fucking just deal with it. Just fucking stop moaning. We complain. We no, we until don't, there's no, a tiny can, bit of snow. We we can, there's bigger storms happening around the world right now. We complain, and that's how we fucking get through it. Yeah, exactly. The all-seeing guys who sometimes complain about things beyond their control. Uh, Indeed. So in terms of things beyond our control, going to be geese dropping. I do it. Yeah, I got one. I think fucking hey. Well, geese dropping when we hear snippets of overheard conversation, either we've heard or sent to us. Geese dropping. Boop. Having a listen. Right, do you want to go first? No. Okay, great. So the first one I've got is from uh, Ellie. Ellie Tranner. Hey. And of course, is on the porn episode. Yeah, buddy. And, uh, and uh, you know, earlier in the year or last year, moved back to Australia. Mm-hmm. And seems to be doing very, very well for herself. She commented on uh, one of our geese drop photos. Yes, I hope, I hope drop... she's uh, keeping the paddock clean yes. and tidy. Yes, she she sent us a geese drop. She'd heard over well back in Australia, and it said, "I overheard some girls at uni. One was upset and said to her friends pretty damn loudly, he sucked my toes, then broke my heart.' <laughs> in that order. Damn. Well. Oh well. Damn. That's uh, worst worst thing could happen. I, I guess. guess so, but Jesus, what? A, I mean, that's the hell of a thing to say in public. Yeah, suck my toe and to share. He sucked my toes, then broke my heart. Yeah, did he suck another foot? Maybe, maybe, maybe. he sucked another foot. Maybe. Damn. It's just like you know. It's no, I mean, your feet are great, but I just want. I just want to experience <laughs> other feet. <laughs> Yours aren't the only feet out there. <laughs> Joe, what is your geese job? Uh, well, I had uh, a wonderful experience on the train recently um, where there was a lot of delays, so everyone was crammed on, and we got to, like, New Malden, and it, uh, so many people got on. It was ridiculous. Right, okay. Real fucking crushed. Really horrible. Um, and these two guys, obviously, in the process of getting on the train, had kind of sort of, like, squashed into each other, and were having a bit of a go at each other. And uh, one of them just went, we're all in the same boat, mate. And the other one just went, shut up. Fuck you and your boat. Wow. <laughs> that's a good comeback, though. <laughs> like 8.30 in the morning. Holy shit. That's I, a good comeback. Like, wow. That's a good morning comeback. I do, yeah, I do uh, definitely enjoy the, uh, the, the commuter. Aggie commuters. Oh, yeah. Fucking love it. There's a guy, if I, in the morning, if I'm getting a lift from Simon, I get off the bus just after the top of the hill a few stops before Servant Station so the bus is pretty packed and everyone gets off at Servant Station yeah. so I get off at a bit of busy point and I go down and most of the time there's usually the same guy stood by the door and one time I went to get off and he, I pressed the bell and he had to move to let me off and he was like Fuck, he kind of went fuck's sake <laughs> to himself 
Another time, there was a truck turning around in front of us, and we had to wait a few minutes, and yeah. he was fucking like, fucking hell, I just want to get my fucking train! Like, getting really angry. And another time, I went to get off, and he, it's him in there as well, and I pressed the bell to get off, and he looked at me again, and I was like, oh, fuck's sake. Like, <laughs> just, just always so angry that the bus isn't taking him straight from his house to the station. I think it's the uh, it's that kind of thing where people kind of almost get a schedule, don't they? Yeah, yeah, that's what like, it is. Oh, well, no, my schedule's fucked now. There's my schedule fucked. doesn't involve you getting off. Because I don't get some of that stuff, so it's me getting off. My um, the, the people I don't like on the train are the ones that, when getting on, they insist that you move down. Right, yeah. And they're just like, they, they get, they're getting on. It's like, can you move down, please? Move down, it's just please. Like, can you fuck yourself? When the bus driver puts on the announcement, please move further down yeah. the bus. Everyone looks around. Like, move. Shit off. That's you. He's talking about you. Uh, this year's job I heard in the Sainsbury's near where I live in Chessington. Mm. I was in there shopping. It might have been when you guys came round that time when Lizzie's parents were away. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And I went to Sainsbury's. In fact, it was that day. And I went to Sainsbury's in the morning. And there was a woman on the phone. She seemed to be in a really serious conversation, so I knew I could hear her side of it. And she was like, well, just talk then. You, you just want to tell me what? Okay, okay, go on, tell me. Just tell me. Do you want pasta or salad for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. I was like, for fuck's sake. It sounded like a really sounded, serious thing was happening. fucking juicy. Fucking hell, I thought something really big was going on. Jesus. This one, I heard a woman, or two old dears on the bus say this. You know those hand towels you bring back from cherries? Just stuff a few of those down there. <laughs> she ran out of tampons. I don't know what was going on there. I don't know what was going on. Fucking hell. There. Just shove that down there. I don't know what was going on there. Yeah, just shove it in there. Being Halloween. Yes. I thought I would talk about... Well, basically, the other day, I was off work sick. It's my uh, my favourite time of the year, but yeah, uh, not, nice. not feeling it this year. No, it, it does. It doesn't seem the it doesn't seem real yet. I'm not feeling anything this I year. I mean, it's still over. It's still over a month away. Halloween, like yeah, but well, not by the time this fucking yeah, comes it's out. true. Ah, ruin the magic. <laughs> so I was off work sick, and um, I don't snooze stuff. And I was like, you know what? I want to lay. I tried playing the PlayStation, but I had such a headache, I just couldn't focus on it. Yeah, I know. And you I mean. was like, right, I'm just gonna watch something. I was like, well, what should I watch? And I, I kept starting stuff, stopping it. And I was really like indecisive mood. And I was like, you know what? I basically, I don't really get to watch horror films that much because I like horror films. Lizzie doesn't like horror films. Yeah. Especially the last few years when we were just at her mum's so we'd both go to bed at the same time and watch, <laughs> and watch TV up there. And it's not like I could watch a horror film then. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity to watch a horror film that I've not seen yet that I've wanted to see. So fuck it, I'm at home. So I watched the It remake. Oh yeah, you've yeah. seen the it remake, right? I haven't. Right, I thought you'd watched. Not it even, head. not even on in thirty right. second clips on YouTube. So I watched that. It was good. I didn't think it was scary, but it, it was no, good. No, I heard horror films it's... hadn't scared. I've yeah. never been scared of a horror film. I mean, years. that's not what it's about anymore. I'm not. I'm not going no. to like. I'm. I'm it had its moments. I'm not going to watch a film knowing it's going to. I bet me. in the cinema there would have been some creepy ass moments, but yeah. I was watching it at home, like on my sofa. I was quite close to the TV. Yeah, the curtains drawn. But it wasn't like it was a very you know scary setting. But I watched it and I liked it. It was more like a coming of age movie, really, to me. It was kind of like Stranger Things without with a clown. Yeah. Um, the cast were great. The kids were great in it. I really enjoyed watching it. It was a good watch, and the clown was really cool. And I am looking forward to the follow up when they're all older. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I think it's gonna be really good. And that's when, next year. That coming out. Yeah, I think so. So when that finished, I was like, right, I'm gonna watch. I felt like watching another horror film. So I watched that Hereditary. Yeah, because everyone was raving about it, and I was like, "Oh, I'll give that a watch." I I remember seeing it's it's one of those ones that's always on the side of a bus. Yeah, it was. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you always see it on the side of a bus, and you're like, "Oh, okay." So I started watching that. The first hour, I was like, "It's a bit slow. It's a bit weird." Yeah, but it had a really there was a really unsettling tone to it that made oh, me want that, to keep watching. Yeah, it's that sort of thing. It's all the build up, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Just yeah. like something's gonna. Happen. I kind of kept watching it because I was like, "It's it's a bit of a weird tone." Like, it's quite an uncomfortable tone. Yeah. So, and I quite liked that feeling. It was, I hadn't had a horror movie put, give me any sort of feeling like that in ages. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to keep what I'm going to see how it goes. And then it got to the last act, and it was... Fuck, man. It was good. I liked it. it at the end, My verdict at the end is, I like, it was the first horror film in years. Fuck, man. The last act, my heart was pounding in my chest. Yeah. And I was like, sat forward. And I was like, holy fuck. I really just like, I can't believe this is all happening. Oh my God, look at that. Oh, that was really, freaked me out, man. When it finished, I was just like, oh, I've only lived in this house a few weeks. I was like really freaking myself back, looking around in corners. I kept expecting to see something. Oh man, I got myself in the right little state. We watched, uh, you know what did it though? It was while I was watching it, 
I suddenly heard what sounded like somebody at the front door. Uh, and before yeah. I could turn, somebody banged on the door like that and banged on the window. Oh, and I was fuck. like, oh, oh, mate, fuck, man. I was like, fuck, fuck, jumped up ran to the door, opened it, and there was like a mailman there. Like, hello, mate, really nice guy. Yeah, I bought a yeah, mail yeah. here, and he needs, needs a signature. I was like, you bang in my head, like, why did you bang on the window as well? Like, yeah, you banged yeah. on the no, door completely unnecessary. and the window, mate. It fucking Like, well, I saw you watching that film Hereditary. I thought I'd shit you <laughs> up a <laughs> mate, treat. Mate, fucking, whoa, shit me up. But yeah, really, uh, since watching it, I've fallen in a rabbit hole of like, watching people's theories on it, watching think, watching like the making of it, interviews with the director. I've really kind of fallen in the rabbit hole. Reaction with it. videos. I don't I haven't watched any reaction videos. Again, it's weird. I don't think as a film I'm I'd be in a rush to watch again. Yeah. I kind of feel it's done its business and it's served its purpose. Yeah, yeah. But I would It's not one of those ones that you're gonna sort of put down as like Yeah. I'm gonna watch this at it least is weird. five times it a It is year. weird and it there's a lot of like I don't know what's happening, but at the end it all quite nicely ties in. Right. And it's just horrible yeah yeah <laughs> it's I really bet, horrible I bet it is it's fucking nasty um, so I do recommend watching it and I think I think Ed might like it if he can if he can get through without being like oh I don't know what's going on and turns it off because it yeah. is one of those for a lot of it <laughs> I was uh, I was with Ed and Sarah a little while ago and we watched uh, we, oh, I can't even remember what it was called but it was uh, it was a uh, a horror film but it was kind of you know sort of tongue in cheek sort of style and it was all based in like some warehouse and like right. a, a dead body had shown up there um, but it had been delivered to the wrong place, so they like it was a really weird setup. It was right. a it was an all right film, but like it's it's you know you're not gonna write rave reviews about it. it was, yeah, it yeah. looked very budget, like, right, but like the the gore and stuff looked good, but like just the actors and yeah, the, like the, the 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 film quality just seemed budget. Were you there like, who watched that terrible horror at Ed and Joe's when? They had no sound at the end. They couldn't afford any sounds. It was, <laughs> it was weird. It was fucking weird. That was what terrible. The fuck? Terrible fucking shit. So, you, so where do you sit on horror films? Are you a fan of horror films? I like horror films. I think you've, uh, I think you've, you've uh, made a very good point, which was like they don't really sort of scare us anymore. But I right. think that's that's down to a number of things. A what life's scary? Yeah, <laughs> life's fucking terrifying. Um, and also just like. They a lot of they a lot of horror films kind of sort of they they stick to the same sort of formula, mm. you know, and because you're so used to like you know sort of like in a scenario where it's all quiet and someone's walking towards like a cupboard or something, you know, yeah. it's like well something's going to jump out of there or it's going to either jump from behind her or a different angle. Basically, something's going to jump out. Something's going to jump out, and I'm prepared for it. Yeah, yeah, that's why Lizzie won't watch them. She's like, I hate being scared. Yeah, but you know it's going to happen. She's like, she's like, I hate being scared, and. I can't even the music. If you shut my eyes. Doesn't matter because the music scares me. Yeah, of course. Um, but I no, I do. I I do enjoy horror, and I've I've enjoyed horror films. But I like I'm I'm not going out of my way to watch like every single. No, horror I film. I don't get a chance. No. Yeah. I mean, I love them. I didn't. I was scared of them. Massively scared of them growing up. Yeah. Like, even Scream scared me the first time or the beginning. You know, no, no. You know what? No, the beginning's fucked. Yeah. Like is. seeing her hanging in the tree is fat, at night. Fuck at me night up. in my new house. There's like a light. I don't know where it comes from. I don't know if it's our house next door, but it kind of lights up the bit of the patio where we would sit on the wall. Yeah. But beyond that, you just can't see anything. And I always think about that scene with the with the, Absolutely. With the boyfriend tied to the chair. And I look at my kitchen window. I'm like, oh, fuck. My, um, I remember we all sat down and watched it as a family scream. So it was like me, my mum and dad and sister. Yeah. And it was all because my sister said it was really funny. And it's it's it a horror funny. film. It is so funny. It's the beginning, yeah. But like, it's a horror film. It's yeah. a fucking horror film through and through. So like, I'd, I'd seen that. Yeah, that definitely fucked my sleep up for a little while. Um, because it was just like, oh, I, I, every time I close my eyes, I see the hanging body of Drew Barrymore. Exactly, that was horrible. Like, yeah, but I, I get that as well. The whole kind of light scene and stuff like that, because we had in our, um, we had like sensor lights in our garden. Right. So like, especially on windy nights, if it, the wind would catch it, It'd go uh, off, and it would go off, and you're just like, there's no one out there. Yeah. Oh, what's happening? The cat like, once passed somewhere. Off yeah, Fox, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, Ugh. like. So, but that's, I think that's just the classic sort of things. I mean, mate, I, the first time I watched Ransom, that fucked me up, like, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Or like the, I the mean, first, it's, it's a horrible feeling, but it's not really a horror film. The first horror Horrific. film, the first horror film that traumatized me was actually Jason Goes to Hell. Right, yeah. But I was, I mean, that came out, I think, like 93, 94. Yeah. And I, so I was like nine, 10 years old. Um, and it's pretty harrowing. Uh, yeah. like, I, I knew, I knew of Jason, but had never seen a Jason film. And this was the one that I saw. And it's like, they kill him and everything, but then like someone eats his heart and yeah. becomes Jason. It's like and a there's, parasite, isn't yeah, it? yeah. And there's like there's one fucking bit where like two people are banging in a tent and he just fucking drives like a 
big metal rod through them and just literally rips the person in half and then lands on top of the other person it's just like this is brutal you were young like, right? you told yeah. me you watched that 10 years old yeah mine was um, Nightmare on Elm Street it was, I was really young it, it was so weird though right so it was it was the, the the situation was that it was on VHS but it was two films on one video right and the first film was Cliffhanger <laughs> oh, oh yeah you said you finished it afterwards it fin- and then it just came on after Cliffhanger yeah. it was just like what the fuck is going on fuck so yeah I, I uh, mine was not on Elm Street my mum liked similar situations I mean my mum liked horror films my dad didn't yeah. so when he was working late my mum would watch them downstairs Yeah. and I remember sneaking down the stairs once and watching I don't know how much of it I watched but um, Nightmare on Elm Street and it fucking scarred me man yeah I, dude I was fucking terrible because that's scared. like that's the thing about I think as much as uh, Nightmare on Elm Street is a horror film yeah it's a psychological yeah. element to it where just, it's just like oh sweet so even when I'm asleep when I feel like I'm at my safest because I'm not conscious I'm not at my safest yeah no like, it really I, I don't even understood the concept of it as a kid I just saw him yeah and was like he's fucking, fucking creepy scared the fuck out of me but that's what well, because of that, I wasn't really big on horror films. My mum liked them. I didn't really. Until I was a bit older, then I like me and Rob really heavily fell into like Halloween and Jason of course, franchises. Yeah. And we I, re- then we've really fell into. We got really big on horror films. Kind of like I'd say I don't know maybe year t- eleven, maybe sixth form. I kind of really I think into your, horror films. your three your three classic characters are always going to be Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, and um, fucking uh, Freddy Krueger. Yeah, stand out. Like there's yeah, no, yeah. there's no, no, like the last time there was ever like an iconic horror character was Scream. Now there are some now, like you got like the Saw franchise. Yeah, no, that's a good point. But that's, I think that's Jigsaw's like... Jigsaw's pretty big now. He's like, Jigsaw is big, but it's not that kind of sort of element of like, you know, like Michael Myers was literally like ruthless, yeah, a yeah. ruthless murderer. Have you seen the trailer of the new Halloween film? I have, yeah. 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 D- interesting, but yeah. Mm, I mean, we'll see. you know... I, I enjoyed the, the Rob Zombie remake, the first one. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. and But I think it's just one of those things. And this like, is a sequel to the original yeah. one, isn't it? With and Jamie it's Lee just Kurtz like, how much, how much can you do like to something before it's just like... Well, I suppose dry, that's like, why they've ignored everything else. Maybe, because they know what works. They've literally ignored all the other sequels and just gone just, directly from the originals. I think because people are so like... It's it's such like an iconic sort of character and stuff. They're just like, well, people will like this if it's just got Halloween written on it, so they're yeah. gonna go and see. It. I mean, my my mum always said to me like they like when what was it like seventy five? What was uh, it? Uh, was it seventy five or seventy nine that Halloween came out? I can't remember the seventies. I think yeah, but like my, I remember my mum sort of saying like, oh no, that's that that really fucking scared me. Yeah, I mean Exorcist as well. My dad walked out the cinema apparently. Yeah, yeah, fair play. So looking at horror movies, I did dive into potential topics and I was looking at a list of like most popular horror movies or scariest horror movies yeah. but I did find an interesting little list I'm going to start with here which is basically a bit of a fun list and it's things you didn't know or creepy facts about horror films oh I know there's I know there's some really weird ones about The Exorcist I don't I'm not and, sure The Exorcist it's only, the, I've only a short list uh, or I know there's some other creepy Holt stuff about uh, no, a- Amityville Right, yeah, I'm not. Well, I can't remember what's on the. I know the first. Well, we'll go into the list of creepy things that are we about horror movies. Poltergeist. Poltergeist is is a scary film. I think but at the same it time, it's almost. It's, there's so many comedic sort of yeah. elements to it. Like the fucking seance woman yeah. looks like a toad. That's the time of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at this interesting list of creepy facts about horror movies. Hit it. The doll from Annabelle was based on a real doll. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah, that's some, that's some like real shit. So the doll brings more. It's, it look, I've seen the doll. It's less scary looking than the one. It's about. just. I mean, it's a very, <coughs> it's a very like classic. Yeah. Creepy looking ass doll, isn't it? Like the doll brings more scares than the actual movie. In 1970, a mother brought home Annabelle for her daughter as a present. Bitch. The daughter Donna was was a nursing school student living with her friend Angie. After a small amount of time with the doll, they noticed strange movements and sounds they'd never heard before. Donna even claimed there was small spots of blood on the doll's hands. On the hands. Oh, stigmata. After having a medium come to check the doll, as well as the surrounding area, they concluded that the apartment that the girls were living in was built in where, the, where a dead little girl was found. <laughs> this meant that the spirit of the young girl had taken the doll and was now living in her. Holy Donna's shit. close friend Lou often stayed at the apartment. He found notes that said, help me, around everywhere, and even had a realistic dream about the doll hurting him. 
Yeah, but that could have just been like her with mental illness and she didn't know how to fucking approach it and she was just to, just left messages around everywhere saying help me after some strange co- occurrences they decided to contact ed <laughs> <laughs> yeah and lorraine warren well done ed the famous paranormal investigators they took the doll and observed her noting how it would levitate and try and cause trouble every now and then that's a bit, <laughs> a bit blase she now remains in the museum at lorraine and ed's home even though he passed in 2006 lorraine says she would never look the doll in the eyes yeah, there's there is something creepy about those, like just just the demeanor. Now this one I'm fully aware. Of. I think we've even talked about this before. Mm. How are the actors and actresses from Poltergeist all passed or po- passed away after filming? Mm. There are lots of rumors that fly with this fact. Not every single person that star in the movies has passed away, but a few have unexpectedly leading everyone to believe there was a curse on the movies. <laughs> About five months after the premiere of the first film in 1982, Dominique Dunn, aged 22, passed away after being in a coma. Damn. Her boyfriend was very abusive to her and choked her into a coma, which well, that's... only lasted four days before her death. That's, I mean, that's not, that's not too weird. That is, that is an abusive relationship that ended uh, horrifically. <laughs> in 1985, Julian Beck, who also starred in the second film, passed away due to stomach cancer. His death was a bit foreseen due to the fact he'd been fighting the sickness for a while. Still, a lot that's of people... not foreseen, con- that's just having cancer. A lot of people continue to associate it with the curse. In 1987, William Sampson died of kidney failure from a failed procedure and infection. Others that starred in the movies have passed away, including Lou Perryman, Brian Gibson, and almost Richard Lawson. Lawson was on a plane in 1992 that crashed in New York. In fact, two, in fact, 27 people died, and he was almost one of them. The most convincing death to go along with the curse is the, is the death of 12-year-old Heather in 1988. She was thought to have the flu, which unexpectedly and quickly turned into cardiac arrest due to her infection that flowed through her body. No one knew anything was wrong with her, and she died on the operating table. So that was the, Fuck. the little girl. Okay, that's a, yeah, that's weird. Next one is also from Portergeist. There were real skeletons used in Poltergeist. What? I almost certainly believe that it's the whole curse is real, though skeletons are the cause. Joe Beth Williams confirmed in an interview that skeletons in the pool scene are 100% real. She says she didn't want to go and spend lots of money in order to get realistic ones, so they decided <laughs> to use actual skeletons. How is that cheaper? <laughs> Candyman. I, I read the so obviously uh, Pill who made uh, Get Out. Yeah, is currently circling the idea of doing Candyman. Oh, interesting. Mm. The bees in Candyman were real. Yeah, he has they, them in his mouth. Yeah, dude, that's fucking. Tony right. Todd, an amazing actor. How do we know? Well, he'd be able to sit with live <laughs> bees crawling bees. around his face and mouth without screaming. Yeah, but they probably took the stingers out, didn't they? They can like remove the stinger from fucking wasps or something. He opens his mouth to bees flying frantically out he wore a mouth guard to prevent any of them going too far into his mouth or down his throat however they could have stung him at any point but didn't because he's the candy man and following on a film I mentioned earlier <coughs> the children in 2017's It are now afraid of clowns wow Bill Skarsgård the new Penny's Wise was perfect at this role he was fucking good he was, it was, he good? He was creepy he had a good voice that's what you wore so perfect, in fact, that he remained in full character between takes. In doing so, Skazgard constantly scared the children they hired as extras. He felt really bad and had some of these kids were never afraid of clowns before. Imagine walking around behind the set and being followed by the sewer-loving clown. I did hear that, that a lot of the actors in it, he, he, he didn't want them to see him before they started filming. Yeah. So when they first met him was on set as Pennywise. That's cool. And he stayed in character throughout. But which is also what Tim, uh, Curry, Tim did. Curry did as well. Yeah. Okay, the last little fact here. Priest blessed theatres playing The Conjuring. <laughs> Fucking There's an actual hell. warning sign here. Con- the Conjuring. Warning. The film you're about to see is physically and emotionally disturbing. People who have attended early screenings of the film have complained about many unusual circumstances after they experienced after the film. Due to our concern for your well-being, we have invited Father Prez to be here. He will be available after the film to provide spiritual support and or conduct a personal blessing should you need it. Please do not hesitate to seek help. Ask your representative where you can sign up for a session with our priest. It all just sounds like marketing ploy. Yeah, no, that's absolutely marketing. I mean, that is, but that's like from the Christian element. It's sense of like, well, instead of just like picketing this why don't we just try and fucking get some good out of it and well, like take all the people that have been traumatized the makers of the conjuring hired real priests to be available to speak to people after they saw the movie 
They start. They stated that the movie brought negative energy and advised people to see selected priests if they felt weird about anything after seeing the film. It just also sounds like a talk to priests, priest yeah, chat, yeah, 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 priest chat, priest chat. Hello, talk no, to priests. No, you can't be in here. This is a priest only chat room. Then, when The Conjuring 2 was released, a man died during the middle of the movie. He was having chest pains and eventually passed out in the theatre. They pronounced him dead and apparently the body went missing. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. Damn. That, that's the kind of thing where, like, Exorcist was out, all the stories were about things like that happening. Someone yeah. died in the cinema. <coughs> a sign fell off and killed someone or hurt someone. Yeah, there were some, like, some oddities. People were ill, like... I think, man, you look at that, man, they had like a fucking Ouija board on set, you know? I think that's just, that alone is uh, things to not fuck with. I don't like... I wish, maybe I can, maybe I'm old enough to ask my mum now, but I remember my mum always saying to me when I was a kid, you don't do the Ouija board. I always yeah. don't do it. We were caught at um, youth club. We weren't doing the Ouija board. We're doing something. He said Luigi oh, board again. <laughs> Luigi board. <laughs> Classic. Yes. It's embedded in me now. We were doing something with the coin. Like when you flick it and ask a question. Oh yeah, kind of like a Charlie Charlie shit. Yeah, there's a really good scene in Hereditary with like the glass. Oh thing. really? Oh, it's pretty. It's horrible. Um, I remember being at a uh, my my parents had been invited to some sort of party, but there was kids there as well. Yeah. And we turned up quite late. And I I and it's, uh, the the person's house was like, oh yeah, no, all the kids are in there. And I walked in. They were all writing uh, letters of the alphabet on paper because they wanted to make like a Ouija board. Right. And, and I was like, I'm not staying in this room. <laughs> So I remember we were doing this thing with the coin and the woman who worked at the um, youth group was just like, I really, I don't do it. She's like, things, yeah. things have happened. But I have my mum saying not to that do it. That shit is real. And I remember I asked my mum, my, so my mum said, I'll have to ask about this. She but, said that, I swear she said she had done it or went to do it and something happened. And she would never tell me what happened. She said something happened. She wouldn't say, talk about it. Yeah. Mum, if you're listening, message me. And be like, if that's true them. or not. If yeah. I made that up, I swear you told me something about a Ouija board in a truck, maybe or something, and like something happened, then you wouldn't, you haven't told me about it. It's like I always found that bit the um, in uh, Paranormal Activity, the first, the first one. one. The first one's the best one. The first one's great, uh, but when he's like fucking around with the with the board and yeah. stuff, and then like they go out and it sets on fire, and it just yeah, on its own, it's just like yeah. that's fucking. There's a bit in there, isn't there, where she gets out of bed and just stares at him for hours. Oh, it's dark. That's it's so creepy. That yeah. Because it is, it's just like the thing. The thing about that is, is that you're. It's it's very very clever. Because when I watch Paranormal Activity for the first time, every time it's like night, I pray for daytime. <laughs> like I in that, no, I was just like, oh, please, just let it be daytime because I can't fucking handle this. That's what. But it's such great build up. That's it's what's just quite like good about it, and even the original is that stuff happens in daytime. Yeah, as exactly. well. Yeah, like in, the, in, the, in that one, all better sort of things happen in daytime. Yeah, and it's like holy fuck, he's, he's in it. can anyone else see what's happening in the street right now? Yeah, this fucking leper man, fucking ah, and <laughs> fucking Pennywise just stood there in the street. Can anyone yeah. else see this? Like that's what was always quite good about it. And this lost be... foreign exchange student in the fucking <laughs> sewer. <laughs> Hello, we we, we watched Jeebus Creepers free that like, Ed's didn't mean it was oh, fucking abysmal. God, it was fucking, fucking abysmal, diabolical, so bad. And that was all in daylight, but I think that's because they couldn't really afford to film at night. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, that's yeah. the kind of feeling I had. I was like, surely this film, this scene would be better at night. Yeah, that was a fucking abysmal horror film. Speaking of clowns, have you seen that uh, that teaser snippet they showed of the Joker? Yeah, yeah. Again, this will be old news by the time this episode comes out. <laughs> it's mm. about six weeks later after that. Ed. I'm not convinced of what they. I, I, I don't, don't think that's him. It is him, but I reckon that's going to be like one of the makeups he has. I think that's because uh, it's all about the early days of the Joker, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think Whacking Phoenix is is great for it because and it's can... outside of like the DCEU terrible fucking yeah, yeah, messy fucking exactly. universe they've got but going on. He uh, he he does sort of uh, odd very well. Oh yeah, I think it'll be great in the role. You know that was it. That just fucking... depends. On... And the thing is, Joker doesn't have an origin. Yeah. So they can kind of do what they want, I guess. Unless you touch, no, the, the, not the Red Hood. There's the Sonic. There is an origin. I've seen an animated of him. Oh really? But there's no real set origin for Joker. No. That's why, like in Dark Knight, uh, the Dark Knight, he always tells them different reasons behind his scars, doesn't he? Because he, has, right, he yeah. hasn't got a set origin, so he can say what the fuck he wants. Well, that's. I mean, that's always. You look at like the first fucking Batman, and he was he, he was literally like a mobster. Yeah. And fucking had an unfortunate horrific accident, yeah. which uh, fucking sent him absolutely batshit yeah. crazy. And this one is definitely more clown based because he's like doing. I've seen in pictures of him doing yeah. makeup for other clowns on set. That's it. Yeah. It's an interesting take. I'll be interested. I'm gonna obviously it's me. I'm gonna fucking see what happens. Like, 
I'm still I'm still a sucker for these films. Of course, no, I'm I'm, like, I'm definitely interested in the element of it being like a Joker only. And film. in fact, it's like a standalone as well. Apparently, they're doing like Jared Leto's getting his own film as a Joker as well. <sighs> Fuck Jared he's, Leto. He's going to be in Suicide Squad two. I think he's going to be. They're in doing a film. second one. Yeah, yeah, mate, remember, it still broke. It still did well financially. That film it didn't have good reviews, but it did well financially. I actually didn't hate that film, and I didn't hate Jared Leto's Joker either. And I know that people. I've I had arguments with it. My love for the guy has definitely dwindled over years. Yeah. But um, I actually quite liked his Joker. Uh, I think he took a lot of shit for it, and I thought it was kind of right. I didn't really bother me his Joker. I thought he looked pretty badass as a gangster. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. I'm talking about the Joker too much. Anyway, there's basically many Joker films coming out yeah. now. <laughs> he's getting his own. He's getting his own universe. So talking about that, I was looking at highest grossing horror franchises yeah let's see what is you know the biggest horror franchise and it's not unusual for if that's the same about horror films it's very easy for them to turn into full on franchises of course very yeah. rare there's one horror film there's usually a terrible sequel somewhere yeah. along the line there's a string of shitty sequels well I mean anything that's came out I mean like you know I know what you did last summer had I still know what you did I swear they had three of those films <laughs> oh did they do a third one I might have so okay, this no, is, one, no one cared because Jennifer Love Hewitt wasn't in it. This is the oh, top so horror movie franchise hot. according to US box office. Okay. Thanks to the likes of It, 291.18 million and rising. Wow. Get Out, 175.75 million. Split, 138.14 million. And Annabelle, 101.27 million. Amongst others, have bought now bought a new audience flocking to the theatres for horror films. Yeah, I think they yeah. do put a disclaimer at the beginning here. It's worth noting that it, while it is the first in a confirmed two-part franchise, it's currently a solo release, so it hasn't been included on this list. Uh, if it had been included on this list, it, it would have, have taken it would have taken eleven place in the list. Huh. For those interested, if it had been eleven place, fourteen and fifteen would have, would have been taken by The Ring and The Purge. Yeah, that makes sense. So number thirteen, Underworld, five films. Damn, they have five. Yeah, total wow. U.S. gross box office, uh, two hundred and fifty-two point seventy-seven million. Mm. Highest grossing entry was Underworld Evolution, twenty twelve. So that was the second. Did you one. watch the Underworld films? I watched the first two. I did watch the third one. It was like a prequel one. I liked the first one. I remember really liking the second one, but I saw it a few years back, and it wasn't as good as I remembered it being. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I tried watching one of the newer ones. And I turned it off. It's like that. I, I the whole kind of sort of like Underworld and Blade and stuff like that. I never watched. I love Blade. Fucking love. I, not, I, not not the third one. Fuck the third one. It's ours. <laughs> fuck the third one. And it's ours. They do say in this specifically. Under, fuck it they in do, the anus. They do say here. Underworld. Loved by fans. Mauled by critics. Critics. Number twelve. Final Destination. Five films. Yep. 263.46 million I like the first two the first two are good I think I prefer the second one out of all of them yeah no the second one second one's good. fucking great I did watch that one with the uh, roller coaster at Ed's once oh uh, yeah I, mate I can't remember how many I don't think I did I see I did watch the last one I watched it at Ed's the fifth one and I didn't think it was we didn't really like it until the very end I think we saw the twist coming it ended with them getting on the plane from the first film oh what yeah. Jesus. So they get Christ. the guys who survived it, spoilers, sorry everyone, at the end of the fifth one, ends with them getting on the plane and then the camera moves back and you see the other guys with the first <laughs> oh, film shit. sat there and it's like, oh fuck and then it ended. So they obviously did That's meet their demise. Yeah. Number eleven. Resident Evil, six films. Jesus. Two hundred and seventy one point twenty seven million. It's getting a reboot of a new film. I think it needed it to be fair. Well, I mean, are they what? So they're going to go right back to the beginning again? They should do it less cheesy action, I think. Yeah. I think they should just make a horror film. The first game they could make into a great horror film. Into like, it needs to be like, it always felt like there wasn't a lot of concentration on the zombies. No. In uh, Resident Evil. And it doesn't need to be because they always have the creatures and stuff and all the puzzles, but I honestly think they could redo the first Resident Evil f- game. I think they could do that as a good film. Yeah. I really think that that if they did properly, they could make a good horror out of that. Yeah. If done properly, and we all know how film is based on games usually 
end. Goes goes badly. Usually shit. Yeah. Um, I still stand by the best film based on a computer game was Mortal Kombat. <laughs> and it shouldn't be, because it's like a PG-13, there's not much blood in it, but it just seemed... I, I loved it. It seemed to hit the I fucking wanna see, points. Uh, I want to see a movie of Duke Nukem. <laughs> well, I know it's Doom, I think they're redoing now. Oh, Christ. There has been talks about a Duke Nukem film recently. I think you might see that. Could be, could be a possibility. Um, what other game films I see? Tomb Raider wasn't great, which really upset me because the games, the new games are so fucking good. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, 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 I digress. <laughs> Number ten, The Exorcist. Five films, and a TV series now. There's is a TV it, uh, series. Is which it I really think, five? Yeah, and there's a TV series which I think's in like its second season. I saw the, uh, I saw the prequel. That's the third one, isn't no, it? No, fourth. Fourth. I think. Because there was definitely three Exorcist films before there was one a of them was called The Beginning. I think. It, yeah, I think that's the one because it's all in like the desert and shit. Like, and there's a really horrific scene where a young kid is like torn apart by wolves. Right. And it's really fucking dark. But uh, I remember seeing that, and I mean, it's it's you know it is what it is. It's just a fucking film, you know. But it's. Uh, so the total U.S. gross office for the all five films is three 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 hundred and thirty one point fifty nine million, but. Worldwide, six hundred and thirty point five million dollars mm. in dollars, of course. Uh, the first one is obviously regarded as one of the best films in in the horror franchise of all time. Number nine, Halloween, ten films. Yep, soon to be eleven. Soon to be eleven. Uh, Three hundred and eight point fifty two million. Is that including like all remakes and stuff as well? Yeah, it's ten. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rob Zombie rebooted the Hamp franchise in 2007, and the fresh Halloween film is currently at work at Blumhouse Productions. Blumhouse Productions make good fucking horror films. That's one good thing behind this new Halloween film. It's got yeah. a, it's got a good production team behind it. Here we go, number eight, Scream. Four films. Yeah. I never saw the fourth. No, did I didn't. I? I gave up. It, the was, third it was too one, long, the man. The third one. It was it too was much. It? Too much time in between the fucking third and the, the fourth. The third one. one was a bit funnier, wasn't it? That's yeah. when James Simon and Bob have the cameo yeah. in it. Like it was a bit. Meh. Yeah. This the 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 killer was stupid. It was so fucking dumb as to why yeah. they were they were the doing whole it. Script thing in it, wasn't it? Like, yeah, it was a whole script thing. It a was long, just a weird missing brother, or whatever it was, or never like a half brother. Yeah, yeah, it was just so dumb. Like it was just it, uh, the second one's all right. Um, uh, nothing beats the first one. The first one no, was fucking. First one's the first one great. was was just horror gold. The first one was, and that's got a a TV show in its third season now. Yeah, Scream, but it's unrelated to all the previous characters and stories. Yeah. Number seven, Nightmare on Elm Street. Nine films. Okay. The highest grossing entry was Freddy vs. Jason, 2003. Yeah. Which makes sense. I kind of enjoyed that. That was all right. I I quite enjoyed that. But it was, again, it wasn't one of those horror films. It wasn't wasn't supposed to shock you. It's just the gore value and the fucking comedy fucking cliche characters. Yeah, I I, I saw that film with my mum. I thought it was great. Um, I actually like the Freddy film, The New Nightmare. A lot of people don't like it when it's more real life and where's Craven's Oh, that's when like uh, Robert is it Robert Eklund? Yeah, yeah. He's actually Robert playing England. himself, yeah, yeah. isn't it? And like, the girls back no, at, as Nancy, but, but as but like themselves. As them. yeah. What I liked about that film is I loved how Freddy looked because he wasn't. It was really decaying, wasn't he? he like, yeah, he was darker and yeah. he wore that cool fucking trench coat and those he wears like those fucking military style boots. There's a great scene where he's like slashing somebody in a room, but he's like on the wall with them slashing them. Yeah, yeah, And he yeah. like steps down and talks to somebody. Oh, so he looks great in it. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth, number six, twelve nice. films. Yeah, that's a lot. Twelve films, and that's that. Recently, they pulled a fresh reboot on that as well. Oh, really? They rebooted it a little while ago, didn't they? A few years back. They did that. I never watched it, but so, they're going to do it again apparently soon. That particular one is basically the first three Jason films in one. In one. So it goes through all the elements to the point where he finds the hockey mask. Because it takes, like, he didn't have a hockey mask until the third third Jason film. Oh, yeah, second one. He's got the sack over he's his got the head. sack on his head. The first one's the mum, and then the kid's, like, shown. Um, like, that bit at the end of the first one was another uh, moment as a kid that fucking oh, terrified yeah, man. me, man. When the little kid... And it, kind of, it kind of gets passed off as a dream, doesn't it? Yeah. But when he oh, when he comes out of the water and that fucking so shit me up as a kid, man, that really shit me up as a kid, that scene. I think, like, again, you think of, like, all these films and stuff, like, again, like, the Halloweens, your, your Freddy Kruegers, your, um, like, all the Exorcist as well, and, and Jason as well. They, um, they've all got this kind of sort of, like, this sound to them that mm. makes them synonymous. So, like, the whole Jason thing is that kick, 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 
like and then obviously like Halloween's just the Halloween song like mm. and like you know uh, The Exorcist has a song <laughs> some reason we said the Halloween song the X-Files theme tune yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've released the new updated theme by I think John Carpenter worked on it for the new film oh really and I've not heard it but I keep seeing it being shared and I was like it's fucking chilling so yeah. I, I, wanna, I should check that out yeah I should check that out and see what they've done with it like that's like it is like it's but that's sort of like it's 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 built to those sort of things but it's also it's mm. it's music that kind of adds an element of dread like so i had like 18 inch figures of freddy and jason considering i was so scared of freddy as a kid i ended up having a talking 18 inch model of it in my bedroom it's one of those talking yeah but yeah it was <laughs> oh freddy sorry yeah, I thought yeah, you yeah. Meant jason. So when you all passed it if you had it turned on it would detect movement and it was and freddy would go hey no running in the hallway <laughs> and jason would go yeah, yeah, it would yeah. do the thing. It was fucking scary. I remember falling asleep stoned one night and then waking up and moving to get myself ready to like get my shit ready and it being on and Freddy doing the hey and me being like fuck me. It's just like Ugh! in the pitch black as well. Fuck off, yeah, Freddy. Yeah, yeah. Get out of my head. I think yeah, because I mean I always put it down to like because like seeing that Jason goes to hell film for like being like one of the the first like horror films to really fuck mm. me up that's kind of why i like it now yeah i get what you mean i went out of my way i didn't even buy the box set i went out of my way to individually try and buy every single jason film yeah i did the same and i think i've got about eight of them i me and rob heavily fell into it man and we were buying loads there was one that i really liked and it wasn't even there's two i really like there's the one where he there's like psychic girl that like, defeats him oh god but then yeah. but then there's the other one where it's not even jason it's the guy the little brother of someone he murdered in the mental house and he puts on the Jason mask That's and starts right. killing people and he's yeah. not even Jason I like fresh takes on it like that I've got number five Paranormal Activity five films yeah 452.71 million the third one's dumb you know what the first two are actually really good the first because the, the one the that's second... set in the 80s is it yeah that was that was alright I didn't mind that that's one the third one I think is it but then it's all kind of like it gets into like the whole witchcrafty bit of the end yeah I never s- creepy, yeah yeah, yeah. Like... I never saw Paranormal Activity the ghost dimension I never watched that no, one no I didn't see that I didn't see the one that was all supposed to be done by like YouTube or whatever like it was, or it was all done by like webcams yeah. and shit I didn't see that one but no, the first two, I mean, I saw the first one in the cinema with a girl I'd just broken up with and she wanted to go to cinema, so it was all really awkward. And that's when the girl next to me, during early in the film, like, pulled out her mobile phone and called someone. And I was like, babe, babe, I'm just talking to me, babe. I'm really scared right now. Just talk to me for a second. I'm really scared! That's how it happened. And I was like, fucking, fucking shut hell. up. Calling someone saying you're <clears throat> scared during the film. Talk to me, babe. I'm just so scared right now. I need, I need to hear your voice. Number four, Jaws. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, well, technically the first film at the time was a horror film. 100% yeah. at the time. Four Jaws films. No, oh, mate, you know what? Jaws Revenge ain't that bad as people fucking say it is. If you if you watch that and don't get too fucking heavily involved with the characters, it's an enjoyable film. So this article ends with Jaws 4, The Revenge, being the weakest and most der- derided. <laughs> <laughs> it's got Michael Caine in it, you oh, fuck. Oh, that doesn't really always help, does it? Number three, I saw am Martin Kane, and I am in Jamaica flying a plane. It's bloody shark. You're only supposed to blow, blow the, the bloody, bloody fins off. <laughs> saw seven films. Yeah. I saw... Now, Chester Bennington's in one of them. Is he? I saw the first one. I think that he turned up to that hoping he'd actually die. Die, and he didn't. Can I do the soundtrack for this? No, no, it's not, we don't want Chester no, no, no. music. It's like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to film myself. Okay, then. I, um, I saw the first one in the cinema first saw yeah me and really Chris, liked it me and Chris went and saw it high as fuck we and walked in with pizzas mate I was high as fuck when I went and saw the first wreck film the Jap- the Spanish one. Oh yeah man, me that too that shit me up again I went with Chris fuck man that shit I went with Lewis and fucking that was X, a man. hell was of a crazy. film um so yeah, uh, saw French. So I saw the first one, and I saw what was meant to be the last one in the cinema, yeah. where the Doctor comes back, and it was like in 3D. So I saw uh, the first yeah, one, yeah, and yeah. I saw the last one. But then since then, they've released Jigsaw. I I saw the seventh one, and because of it, I don't know if it's because it was all shot to be in 3D, but all the blood looks really pink in it. It is. It's like fake. It's so, it's like, but it's so, I mean, so I mean, I bad. I saw it in 3D, and it did look pretty bad. Um, Number two. There's a one, but isn't there like what? a bit where like someone drop like someone drops like nails and they all just like land on the screen and it's supposed to be three D. There's, there's so many bits in there like that. Okay, that's like they've added. I that feel like three D cinema is really copped out now. I don't think it's much of a thing anymore. It will be say that, but bearing in mind, in like the you know back in fucking eighties and shit, 
that it was really preserved for horror films. Yeah, well, there, like there, there Jaws, was Jaws, there was 3D. Jaws, there was Freddy, there was Nightmare on Elm Street 3D. Yeah, like they were films or horror films were made for 3D. It was quite the norm then. Yeah. Um, number two, The Conjuring four films, four hundred twenty-five point forty-one million. Wow, that's really high up there. Yeah, number, but then this, I mean, that's... the Con- I haven't even seen them all, but they are very popular at the moment. Yeah. Was we watched one of them at Ed's that time? About Is that the that... one with the the Jew demon? So isn't it the one that has the nun popping up a lot and the nun's a spin off of the conjuring, right? I think that could be, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Annabelle. Was that not that? No, that's got to be something. No, yeah, different. the nun. Yeah, yeah, Annabelle and the nun and the crooked man are two spin off films. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was focused on the characters and conjuring two. So that was um we watched that at Ed's, right? That's the one about the poltergeist in England. It was not a good film. Oh, wasn't that supposed to be like the one of like the Ealing? Yeah, it wasn't very good. It wasn't good at all. No, right? it wasn't very good. So number one, again, the first film you own is the only one you would class, I think, as a horror. Yeah. But obviously, it's still a franchise of eight films, and that's Alien. I was, you know what? Before, so before, before you even went through the list, I was thinking about Alien, and I was just like, "But is it really a horror?" Because I pulled it up because I was saying, "Hey, your kitchen reminded me of the spaceship." Yeah, aliens, of course. Because the tiling was all white up across the ceiling, uh, so it made a hundred and eight million. No, sorry, uh, five hundred and nine, five hundred and ninety point nineteen million adjusted for inflation is one point eight million. Highest entry is obviously Alien, which made two hundred and seventy nine point sixty one million. Surprise, so the second one. I thought the second one might have been up there for highest entry. Yeah. But that's had a string of again questionable sequels. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, the, the first, the first four are great. I'll, um, I'll even say like the the fourth yeah. one. Fucking love the fourth. I like one. the fourth one. I, I definitely love the fourth one. They do say the most recent. There's entry. so many good fucking people in it as well. Alien like. Covenant was you know, something of a crit of a, a critical and financial dud. Can't believe I almost fucked you. And there was gonna like be you never fucked a robot. <laughs> there was gonna be the uh, Neil Brock. Uh, Blog camp director from District Nine was going to take over a direct sequel to Aliens, but yeah. that has now been canned. And there was a lot of back and forth between what um, Prometheus Two was going to be, and that turned into Alien Covenant, and it was shit. And then after that came out, everyone was like, "Fucking the other Alien films." Yeah, basically. And now they've made that new Predator film, that everyone says is shit. Yeah, so, I saw. Um, I think I saw Tom from the yeah. Anywhere But Here say that I've, was a uh, that was shit. Few people have seen it and told me it's not great. They he said it was enjoy- No, he said it's shit, they but said enjoyable, it's fun. Like, enjoyable it's got, shit. It's fun. Apparently, it's really funny. Uh, and has a, and has a lot of gore in it, but it's not good. Yeah. So that's an interesting uh, development. Alien there was Alien. the highest grossing. Yeah, that is no. That, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have thought that. I mean, it's. I. I. I again, it's that sort of. Maybe. It's, uh, maybe I see that as more of like a sci-fi than I do horror. Yeah, that's you true. Know? Sci-horror. Yeah. yeah. I've had arguments with people about that. Sci-horror, Sci-fi, horror. horror, crossover, genre. So I'm going to go out on the limb and say the best horror films I've seen recently, new ones, has been Get Out. Yeah, I enjoy Get Out. And um, now Hereditary, I think. Mm. To the point, only because it made me feel uncomfortable and filled me with dread. And just, it disturbed me a bit. I was, yeah. I was like, I'm going to think about this in bed tonight. Yeah. No, that's and like- I did. That's what you kind of want from a I horror film, isn't it? definitely sat there and like, about it in bed that night. And that film has moments where it plays on you, where you know you see things in your room that look like it could be a person. Yeah. It has a few of those moments in it. So I was at night in my room, my hat I wear to go running is hanging off like a handle of like the top cupboard. So I woke up in the night and looked and was like, oh, fuck, it's a head. <laughs> like someone stood there. Like, and you know if you're not you going to see stuff, but you freak yourself you into thinking you will see stuff. Of course, yeah. And that's a mark of a good horror film for me. Is that if, if when, when it finishes, if I think about it a lot more and it kind of resonates with me and I start freaking myself out, yeah, that's something that then, to me, is like, okay, that actually was quite a good horror film. Yeah, I'm not like, I mean, I'm not fucking worried about some like masked superhuman like, No, killer. exactly, yeah. Like, you know, you're fucking Jason no. and shit. I'm just like, well, that's not going to happen. I mean, yeah, I could be walking down the street one night and get my fucking throat slit by anyone possible. But like, like you don't go through life thinking that. Like, you know, you can't, that will fucking, that will put you, that's going to make I you not want to leave your flat. A like, horror film I saw with an ex-girlfriend and she was so scared of it that it, the film didn't disturb me that much but it scared her a lot mm. to the point she wasn't meant to stay over that night but she's like I can't go home and, and we you were got, like yes. oh, and we got home I remember my dog at the time started barking she was like oh my god really? she was really scared by it and that was that like creep film with the guy that was doing like the abortions underground in London's fucking train stations. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a horrible bit in it because he watched he's like, he's like a deformed fetus that was aborted but lived I think and he, right. he just carries on on his own in the underground 
just doing what he remembers seeing his dad do, which was giving illegal fucking abortions. So he would like Panic on kidnap the women. Of he would kidnap his women and bring them down to the clinic, which is this dirty old abandoned lab in a fucking London train station. Yeah. And he would go. Through, he would have them strapped to the chair. And he would go through what he saw his what his dad doing. So he would like turn a tap on, but no water would come out. But still, put his hands under the tap. Right. And afterwards, shake his hands off. But even though there's no water, so he's clearly just got dementia. Them, like... And then put on the glove, but it all fucks his hands. And he'll turn with his, the gloves all weirdly on his hands and be like, eh, pick up the scalpel and shit. Like, that was quite a scary thought. Yeah, no, I get that. There's always, I mean, that sort of shit reminds me of, uh, was that Midnight Meat Train? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's like, that, all that kind of sort of under, I think that's a fucking great film. Yeah, it is a like, good that's film. That's really, really cool. Um, new, new horror films I haven't seen a lot of. I don't know. There's, I, I, t- I guess a part of me is just, there's just no hope. I'm just like, nah, I don't really see this being good i think I, I, i'm not willing to give it a chance that's why i kind of held out that's why i made a point of watching it which i know i wanted to see and ed's been telling me to watch it and rob's been telling me to watch it and i've been at ed's a few times and he's been like oh let's put it on and i've been like ah, oh, i don't know i'm kind of not in the mood yeah. to watch it yeah, now yeah, yeah. so that's why i made a point of sitting down and watching it um and same, same with Hereditary. I was like, right, I now want to watch another. I'm in the mood now. I want yeah. to watch another one. And I've seen people say this is scary and it had good reviews. I think um, I think with horror films, it's it's difficult to do scenarios that are, feel real and it effectively be scary. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, you look at, like, Hostel. That was their attempt at something real because of fucking whatever goes on in Eastern Europe. Um but it was it's just it's almost unbelievable you're just like no that's that's insane like that's just to put the fear of god into every us traveler to not get a passport and leave the country exactly. but like i think it's um it, there's there's you can't you can't really have like a yeah like a an like a you know or, or like they did that what was that one in the woods where a bunch of chavs like beat up a woman's fucking husband and then they're just trying to like chase her because she's like witnessed it or something oh, i can't remember i want to say into the woods or something like that it had that fucking kid from this is england in it no oh, i don't remember i, I was thinking but like it was literally cabin just, in the woods for yeah, a second the scary that. thing I love that is literally just a group of chaps cabin in the woods was good it wasn't it yeah had, it, cabin had, was... it had scary moments at the beginning but it was it very bits, like when like those first zombies show up and stuff i had it but then it did turn into a bit of a it had the the mixed funness was, of the yeah, lab downstairs. I think that was, and, it was very how ridiculous the whole thing got. But you know, I loved I loved the whole thought process behind I think that film because it was uh, because it, was it Josh Whedon that did yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Because that it had that sort of Buffy the Vampire yeah, element yeah, to it, where it's it just yeah. like, oh, it's like it's funny, but some bad things are happening. Yeah, and then he literally kills everyone in yeah, the yeah. world at the end. <laughs> literally everyone. <laughs> everyone. So if we're talking about horror movies, to kind of wrap things up. Mm. It'd be hard when you when you think about horror movies. You always think about like, especially now it's getting dark outside. Now Joe's flat's getting dark now. I can just see the light from his laptop on his face. Yeah, we haven't got any lights. It's, on, it's kind of setting the mood now for this. I do. Um, this is what I, I sit in the dark. It's fine. <laughs> this is kind of I am one with the dark. It's hard to think about haunted locations. And back in our episode, the paranormal episode we did, which popped up has been a year old recently. Yeah, like the awesome Mulder and Scully artwork. No, oh, thank you. We did like most haunted London locations. Yeah. So I might actually hand this over to you for this one. But this is... I looked at the most haunted spots in Surrey, a bit closer to home. Okay. I'm going to hand this over. I don't think Joe can talk us through the most haunted locations in Surrey. Let's see. Let's see what haunted locations we have. I mean, Hapton Court's on there, right? Let's find out. Well, uh, yes, to kick things off, uh, we have uh, number eight here, uh, the Georgian House Hotel. I've heard about this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, then you might possibly know that in 1756 it was built. Uh, It's believed soldiers and noblemen may have stayed here when Bonnie Prince Charlie set up his camp in nearby Derby. Oh, shit. However, it is not them who visitors have spotted roaming the corridors. The ghosts that is often reported in the hotel is that of a former guest, a well-dressed man in a pinstripe suit. He has a habit of slamming doors and likes to move things around and cause items to fall off the shelves that, are, that they are on. How inconsiderate. His hauntings seem to be in only two rooms, 10 and 12. So be sure to request those if you want to increase your chance of a paranormal experience. Man, that sounds like something we should do. <laughs> would you stay in a haunted hotel? Um, I would if me and you went and had a Zoom mic. Yeah, I'd absolutely <laughs> I'd, I'd absolutely stay in room t- 10 or 12. I wouldn't want to do it on my own, but I would do it like with you and Ed maybe. Yeah, and, ta- and, take, and, take, and take the 
podcast equipment with us. Yeah, no, I'd do that. That'd be quite, that'd be quite fun. I think we should do that. Go down to the bar, have a few beers, and then go up Where's to the that? room Where's and just that? sit in there. Is that in Chessington, is that? It's no. not in Chessington, no. <laughs> Georgian House Hotel. All right, keep in mind that. We'll do that. Um, this was a surprising one, actually. Uh, number seven, Selhurst Park, home of Crystal Palace. Right, of course, yeah. Uh, oh, just yeah, best known for being the home ground of Crystal Palace Football Club. But did you know that it has an eerie secret past? Wow. In 1932, Crystal Palace goalkeeper uh, Billy Callender to, <laughs> took his own life by hanging himself in the grounds. Fuck. Since then, his troubled soul has been said to haunt the football ground. It's also said to, uh, to be cursed after manager Malcolm Allison engaged the service of a psychic to boost the team's performance. <laughs> However, there's some kind of dispute over payment and the psychic placed the curse on the oh, football club. For fuck's sake, classic. Bollocks. Bollocks. What else we got? Number six. Knight's Department Store. Don't know where that Wait, is. Wait, I don't know where this is. I don't know. Either. I saw this pop up on a few lists, actually, this one. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know where it is. No, I'm not too sure either. It doesn't even say. Uh, as one of the town's oldest stores, it has become something of a landmark. Probably uh, in Knights, is that a place? Knightsbridge? No. No. Um, something of a landmark, but people seem to forget that it was once a hotel. It it's is... in Rygate. Ah, oh, okay. That's not too far away. No, not at all. Whilst you're on it, can you check where the Georgian Hotel is? Uh... It has become a popular spot for paranormal investigators who are eager to make contact with Tommy, a little boy who was murdered there when it was still an operational hotel and who is believed to still haunt the property to this day. Hazelmere, Georgian Hotel. Well, that's not too far. No. There are also reports of orbs and spirit lights within the property. Classic. Always, isn't it? you gotta, you got to love it. Brooklyn's Racetrack. I heard a lot about Brooklyn's being haunted. That's not far at all from here. No. Brooklyn's just uh, it's just past Walton. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Uh, on February fifteenth, nineteen thirteen, race car driver Percy Lambert managed to achieve the land speed record of one hundred and three miles point for eight four miles per hour at Brooklyn Racetrack. On achieving the goal, he promised his fiance he would not attempt to break his own record. However, the need for speed proved too much for Lambert, and he attempted to do just that. He blew out a tire during his attempt and died in the resulting crash. To this day, his spirit has apparently been seen pacing the track and walking into the Vatican, which is the <laughs> name given to the large hangar where his car would have been stored. Wow. Whenever he is seen, he appears to be wearing a full, le- uh, full race gear, leather coat, cap and goggles. Other witnesses are reported seeing him drive a ghostly car and also report hearing <laughs> his engine roaring around the track. <laughs> Ghost See, car. How many? How many? Uh, ghost car. <laughs> you're going to call bullshit on some of those people, aren't you? Yeah, ghost car. Uh, number four, Haroldsley Drive in Hawley. I've heard about this one. Home to an unexpected. Do you have you heard about this one? Oh, have you heard about this one because you did the research? <laughs> uh, yeah, but I was aware of this one. Okay. Home to an. I've had un- lots of books on ghosts growing up in the area and stuff. No, that's, I like that. That's pretty cool. My dad had um, UFO magazines. I had like the A to Z of like haunted places in England. I bought it from Centre Parks when I was a kid. That's it was cool. an awesome book. Uh. So yes, Harold's Haroldsley Drive in Hawley, uh, home to an unexpected haunting, which seen an entire troop of soldiers marching through the area. Wow! The reports of this paranormal event state from uh, that a phantom bell starts to toll at sundown and gradually increases in volume until midnight, when a small army of men pass through Haroldsley Drive and head for the Thunderfield Castle, which is believed to have been the resting place of King Harold's men, which was used while it, uh, on their way to Hastings. <laughs> classic that's on your way to Hastings that's quite, a, quite an interesting one it is isn't it I'd go hang out there for six hours yeah and just see if a, <laughs> only six hours a though. ghost army I'm went here past. for six hours to find well, some ghost in, army it says, in, it says until midnight so oh, you kind okay. of like if you sundown is about six o'clock you have to you have to consider that's I stayed in the most haunted town in Switzerland once and we didn't know until we got there as <laughs> the most haunted town in Switzerland and they, they said how there were ghost horses and ghosts of people then screaming in the forest at yeah. night. I'm fairly sure that's where I thought I saw a ghost and as my mind was playing tricks on me where I got up in the night and there was a man wearing that old style clothing stood in the corner of the fucking room looking out the window. That's weird. And I sat up and I stared at it for ages being like, who's that? And it looked at me and I was like, fuck, and dived under my covers. I'm so fucking scared. I put my headphones in on my iPod. Yeah. And all I had on there, I was too scared to listen to music because I didn't want to hear it. So I turned the volume down and just watched a silver chair video I had on my iPod over and over again with no music until <coughs> until the sun came up. Wow. I I was fucking scared, man. Yeah, dude. And when I said to the receptionist downstairs, like Ben and Lee were taking the piss. 
And the guy was just like, oh, did you see Ghost? And kind of did like a beard gesture. And I was like, fuck, because yeah, he had a beard. Like That's fucked. But I just don't know whether that was, whether I was just scaring myself, I don't know. But it, it shit me up. <laughs> yeah, man. That's like, that's no joke. No. Are we at number two or one now? Uh, we're at number three. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, this is the punch bowl in. Yeah, punch bowl is meant to be very horny. That's like, that's like the big, uh, like, the crater big, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. thing, isn't it? It's meant to be really haunted around there. Don't they say it's like some sort of gateway to hell or something? It's very... You know what? So, when um, when we were in our sort of 20s, me and me and Matt Toms um, yeah, yeah. took a, a drive down to Portsmouth because we had a, a friend who was at uni down there. And he picked me up on the Friday from work and we were driving down. And um, as we're going along, we're, we're, we're going through the punch bowl... And then his brakes just stop. And he's just like, mate, my brakes aren't working. Oh, and we're driving. Like, we're going. We're like, not crazy speed, you yeah. know, about 30 miles an hour. And he's just like, my brakes are not working. Like, And I saw his foot just, like, pushing, like, on it. And it's just like, what the fuck? And he's just like, we just got to roll. We've just got to, we've just got to go. Like I can, I can, I can take my foot off the accelerator because it's a hill. Like, yeah. we're going down and shit. But, my, like, right now, my brakes are not fucking working. And then we just got to a certain point and then his brakes started again. Wow. And it's just like, what the fuck was that about? It didn't happen the rest of the journey. Nah, just that. Just that time. So fucking strange. Scary. Uh, located in Oakwood, this is reportedly one of the most haunted pubs in Surrey. Paranormal tales linked to the inn include a landlord who is not yet ready to give up his bar. There have been many reports that an older man with a beard is often seen wandering the pub. He has a weakness for barmaids, it seems, because <laughs> they are always getting touched by unseen hands. Is it you? <laughs> fucking landlord has just got like a finger hole or something and he just tickles their fucking ass he believes uh, that he is in charge of the pub and often calls time at the end of the night it is also a... <laughs> time gentlemen please who said that <laughs> not me more <laughs> time gentlemen time gentlemen please it's, uh, it's also alleged that he has a spectral dog who likes to lay by the fire on cold evenings <laughs> It has also been reported as uh, uh, the dog has been reported as growling at anyone who approaches before vanishing into thin air. Oh, right. The restaurant area has had reports of a grey lady dressed in crinoline dress circa of the 17th century, and the kitchen door is frequently opened by an unseen entity. In fact, this last one is so common that the regular customers barely even bat an eyelid at when it happens. Customers and staff have reported jiggly door handles, creaking floorboards, <laughs> heavy footsteps when, when nobody is there. <laughs> jiggly door handles, I love it. Number two, Betchworth Castle. I don't know this one. No, I don't know. Betchworth Castle. Betchworth. Does it say where Betch that is? Doesn't say where it is. Oh, um, no. No problem, sorry. Nothing really here, no. Betchworth Castle. Let's have a look. The story goes that one of the prisoners behind being held captive in the fortified manor had managed to escape and Lord Hope, who owned the property at the time, had chased after him. He spotted a figure lurking Brockham? in the... Brockham? 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 Brockham. Rumham! He spotted a figure lurking in the shadows and immediately ran him through with his sword. <laughs> However, later he learned that it was actually his own son that he had slaughtered. Oh. Strangely enough, it is not the spirit of the boy who seemed to hang around Betchworth Castle, and rather Lord uh, Hope himself, who is said to wander the grounds, constantly wringing his hands in despair. <laughs> That's pretty scary. Numero uno. Number one. Da, 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 da. Hampton Court, of motherfucker. Of course it is. Once the home of Henry VIII, it is known to be the most haunted places in England, let alone Surrey. There are many different spirits who are reported to call it home, including two of Henry's ill-fated queens, Catherine Howard and Jane Seymour. Jane is uh, the, more, uh, the most sighted, uh, often climbing the stairs at the palace dressed in white and carrying <laughs> a lit taper to light her way. <laughs> However, coming Cath through, coming through. Catherine's ghost is far more uh, terrifying to visitors. <laughs> History buffs will recall that Catherine was beheaded for allegedly being unfaithful to the king. It seems that she is doomed to relive, uh, relive that fateful night when she was arrested because her ghost is seen shrieking and running to the chapel in search of refuge, much as she said to have done in that night. Another one of the many ghosts is Sybil Penn, aka the Grey Lady of Hampton Court. I've heard of the Grey Lady. I've heard that. Uh, there are sightings of her recorded as far back as 1829, which incidentally was when her tomb was disturbed. She oh, was a servant, interesting. Yeah, she was a servant to the Tudors and served as a nurse to Prince Edward and Elizabeth I. 
She even cared for Elizabeth uh, when uh, she had smallpox despite being sick with the disease herself and ultimately dying a short while later. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I heard a lot of stories about Hampton Court. There was a time it was on the news because that camera picked up a door open and closed I'd, on its own. I'd seen something which was a, a very um, a hooded figure or some shit. But yeah, there was. I definitely see, remember the door closing. Mate, we'll probably there. There's probably plenty of Hampton Court footage, but no one's fucking bothered to archive or go through it. Yeah. Like there's probably there's so loads much stuff at Hampton Court. Um, well, we were there obviously a few weeks ago. We were yeah we were there but like we were there but we were we didn't really have a, enough time to like go hunting casually ghosts. like walk around that place. <laughs> I would, I'd to love go. to fucking really have a walk and like I don't, I don't really like mind about the history of it. Uh, I want to just go and sort of have a walk around at night. <laughs> a night walk around a Hampton night Court. Walk around Hampton Court unsupervised. That'd be <laughs> sick. And I, I would I don't know about unsupervised. So I'm, <laughs> I'm scared to get lost. <laughs> But I don't want I don't want the person guiding me to be like, "Ooh, this is a creepy place." I want them to be on the same level of scared as me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'd 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 like to do a ghost hunt in Hampton Court. Well, um, I mean, it's not too dissimilar from that time we were in that house when we took up ghost hunting for a winter. That was fucking. Oh, that ridiculous. was a good time, wasn't it? What's the deal with this house? Seriously, you, you weren't listening. No, not really. Anyone who has lived in this house has either died randomly, gone missing, or moved out pretty quickly because of paranormal activity. Oh, the films suck. Not the films. <laughs> There's been reports of strange goings on, objects moving, sightings of ghosts and poltergeist activity. It sounds exactly like the films. Who's that? Did you invite Ed? No, it's, it's, it's just us here. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, fuck that, I don't fuck with ghost kids. That's reassuring. Let's, let's just do what we're here to do. Have you got the spirit box? Is that what this thing's called? What's it do? Haven't you ever watched Ghost Adventures? <sighs> of course not. The spirit box uses radio frequency sweeps to generate white noise, which very suggests gives entities the energy they need to be heard. Fuck me. How much was this? About 70 quid. What? Yeah. Did you use the podcast fund? What, what podcast fund? I just bought it myself. What a waste of fucking money. You just put that towards booze or weed. It's my money. Then why am I holding it? Be because, you know what, Joe? These are the type of conversations that people say we're a married couple for. Oh, so it's my fault, is it? No. What's happening? This isn't us. We don't argue. It's this place. It's already getting to us. I guess we should go and see what all the noise upstairs is then. Yeah, let's do that. So how long, how long do we have to stay here? Until we find ghosts. And how are we going to find... What, what is it? What is it? So, something touched my balls. Your, your balls? No, I'm not lying. I feel violated. Get the spirit box out. Turn it on. Right. Back. Okay, it's on. Hello. Is there anyone here? Did you just touch Joe's balls? Ugh. Play it back. Hello. Is there anyone here? Did you just touch Joe's balls? Yeah. Hey, back. <laughs> oh, well, fuck this thing. Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything. I'm getting a really bad feeling about this place. Oh, shit. It's locked. Huh? Oh, still still's locked, too. I think every door in this house just locked. Okay. I guess he wants us to go through that door. Wonder what's behind lucky door number one. Oh, please don't be baby's nursery. 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 It's baby's nursery. Of course it is. I'm starting to think we've gathered enough evidence. Yeah. Can we go to the pub now? I think so. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Hang on. Hang on. I've got an idea. It's just a little bit crazy. I can't be any crazier than what's happening now. Just, just let me try this. Okay. Hello. We are going to go to the Fighting Cox pub for a pint. Really? If you're not too busy doing wherever it is this is, do you fancy coming with us? Is that a yes? 
I, I, I can't believe that worked. Oh, uh, me neither. The, the ghost is so shit. For, where is it? Where is the ghost? It's playing pool with Jack. Huh? <laughs> Yo, me and the ghost are going to Eden Kebab for a chicken wrap. You guys coming? Fuck yeah, we are. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun though. That was, the, you know, surprisingly ended that up was better fun. in our favour. And that was a good fucking rap we had that night from Eden Kebab. I think he, uh, I think he haunts the stoop now. Yeah. Well, oh yeah. The the, the fucking the spot. stoop. Or the spot. The fucking. He's. Yeah. I think he. I think he Someone now needs haunts. to. It's harder for us to go there now. The building there and this and that and fucking yeah, winter's coming again. He needs to get the, the chance to go park. there as much. But yeah, you know, I hope that ghost. I hope that ghost has a good time. I stopped, you know, hanging around with the ghost because he started sharing like stuff from Britain first on Facebook and when you get that, to that yeah, point no, you that just gotta start was, distancing yourself hasn't you that was awkward it was cool to have a ghost friend but when you start sharing stuff like that on Facebook you just gotta call time on it yeah, you, yeah it's not it's not the sort of person you want is it speaking of calling time I say it brings us to the end of this Halloween themed episode I, where we basically just read out lots of lists and so hope you enjoyed us reading lists everyone talked a little bit about some horror and shit and some yeah. ghosts and all things creepy and spooky yeah, and now, it is, now, now it is like pitch black in Joe's flat and I can't even <laughs> now his laptop's gone off I can't even see Joe at the other end of the table. Oh, God, Jesus Christ. There he is. My hoodie behind you looks terrifying, by the way. That really hurts my eyes. Look at the, look at my hoodie behind you. Other side. <laughs> it looks like it's just a little man stood there with a hood up. Fucking, what's that? That's scary that, as fuck. That, that. It's like a big felt penis behind you. Ah, excellent. Well, it's just what my flat needed. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. I, of course, have been Greg Felt Penis Armstrong. And I have been Spooky Joe Jackson. <laughs> 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 Because this is Thriller. Thriller. So much more superior to ghosts. Good night. Bye. The All Seeing Guys podcast is part of Podnose, the UK's leading independent entertainment podcasting network. For episode archives of The All Seeing Guys and all of the shows on the network, visit us at www.podnose.com. You can also follow us on Twitter via at Podnose or send us an email via admin at podnose.com. Thank you.